Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. Today's topic is oral lichen planus. It is a uh, immunological mucocutaneous uh, lesions which can affect either skin or mucosa or both. So it is not just uh, confined to oral cavity. It is present uh, other parts of the body too. What we are seeing about oral lichen planus in detail. So now let's get into the details of oral lichen planus. So oral lichen planus. So lichen planus, the word derived from the Greek word lichen means tree moss and also a latin word planus planus means flat so tree moss or flat so it looks like a tree moss and it is a flat lesion so that's why it got this name lichen planus it is a immunologically mediated mucocutaneous disease first described by wilson in 1869 it affects around 0.5 to 1 percentage of world population. The condition can affect either the skin, mucosa or both. So it causes bilateral white striations, papules or plaques on the buccal mucosa, tongue and gingiva. So it is either papule or plaque or white striation can be seen on buccal mucosa, tongue and gingiva. Uh, let's uh, see its uh, historical um, uh, information that is it was first uh, described by Wilson in 1869 as a chronic disease affecting the skin, scalp, nails and mucosa with possible rare malignant degeneration and Francois Henry reported the first oral lichen planus related carcinoma in 1910. And Wickham in 1895 described the characteristic appearance of whitish striae and punctuations that developed a flat surfaced papule. So that is Wickham striae, which is a characteristic feature of oral lichen planus, which was uh, it was described first in 1895. So let's see the epidemiology of oral lichen planus. So as I mentioned, it was affecting around 1.5 population and the highest is 3.7%. It is people with mixed oral habits and lowest it is 0.3% in non-users of tobacco. Okay, so in mixed users it is around 3.7 and non-users it is 0.3%. So the annual age uh, adjusted incidence rate was 2.1 to 2.5 among thousand men and women and the relative risk of oral lichen planus among smokers is 13.7 times greater than non-smokers so smoking is a big contributing or predisposing factor for oral lichen planus so as per definition it is a common chronic immunological mucocutaneous disorder of striated squamous epithelium so etiological factors, uh, we don't know exact etiology but the most accepted and current data suggest it is a T cell mediated inflammatory disease in which there is a production of cytokines which leads to apoptosis. Apoptosis is nothing but cell death. So T cell mediated problem, there is cytokine production and it leads to apoptosis that is a etiology so other possible uh, theories which includes uh, genetic backgrounds where the weak association between hla antigen and lichen planus so that also is there but it is commonly accepted one is t cell mediated cytokines apoptosis concept and now let's see the predisposing factors so genetic background could be a predisposing factor and infectious agents uh, such as um, HPV virus that is human papilloma virus, Epstein-Barr virus, human immuno 
deficiency that is HIV virus. Mm, there are various habits which includes uh, smoking, betel nut chewing and uh, diabetes uh, hypertension which are associated with oral lichen planus. Dental materials such as restorative treatments in the oral cavity also identified as a triggering element of oral uh, this uh, lichenoid drug reaction okay and drugs the this uh, drug reaction may be triggered by systemic drugs including NSAIDs beta blockers uh, and sulfonyl ureas so these are the predisposing factors of oral lichen planus now let's move on to the clinical features so clinical features oral lichen planus affects all racial groups and there is a female to male predilection that is 1.4 to 1 females having more diseases it is affecting oral cavity in a bilateral fashion it is always bilateral oral lesions usually involve the posterior buccal mucosa or less commonly the tongue and although any side can be involved palatal and sublingual lesions are uh, very rare palatal and sublingual lesions age uh, we can say middle-aged or elderly people mean age is uh, around uh, fifth decade and uh, it is rarely seen in young adults and children so like in planners commonly affect one to two percentage of general population we uh, discussed it already prevalence is around 0.5 to 2.2 percentage and the uh, skin lesions so while coming to the skin lesions of lichen planus which appear as small angular flat topped papule flat topped papule only a few millimeter in diameter these may be discrete or gradually uh, coalesce into large plaque so papule is different plaque is a coalated uh, mass appearance plaque is means hard surface so you know dental plaque so it is a hard tenacious uh, appeared uh, material so papule coil is to form plaque each of which is covered by a fine glistening scale okay so the papules are sharply demarcated from the surrounding skin so early in the course of the disease the lesion appear as red but they soon take a reddish purple or violet hue then later a dirty brownish color it will uh, and develop so the center of the papule may be slightly umbilicated so we know what is umbilical cord so the center of this papule it's like umbilical uh, area it is slightly umbilicated its surface is covered by a characteristic very fine grayish white lines which is known as Wickham stripe so we come stray is very very important it is a commonly asked question as a short note it is seen in oral lichen plants it is a white grayish white lines seen on the surface of this lesion and the lesion may occur anywhere on the skin skin surface but usually are distributed in a bilateral symmetrical pattern most often on the flexor surface of the wrist and forearms the inner aspect of knees and thighs and the trunk so i'm talking about the other parts uh, lesions which is seen in the other parts uh, not just in the oral cavity so in chronic cases hypertrophic plaques may develop especially over the shins and the primary symptom of lichen planus is severe pruritus that may be intolerable okay and in patients with oral lichen planus, scalp involvement and nail involvement is uh, rare actually. So these are the clinical features. So don't forget we can stray. Now we are into oral manifestations. So oral manifestation in the oral cavity the lesion consists of radiating white gray velvety thread like papules in a linear or annular and reticulum arrangement forming a typical reticular patches rings and streaks so it is uh, a tiny white elevated dot is present at the intersection of white lines which are wickham stray so when wickham stray is inter Mm, sectored and these intersected areas will be little elevated dot 
so it is it could be linear annular or reticulum arrangement and the most common site is uh, buccal mucus and it is usually asymptomatic and bilaterally symmetrical anywhere in the oral cavity so it can be seen mostly on buccal mucosa tongue lip gingiva floor of the mouth palate and may appear uh, weeks or months before the appearance of cutaneous lesion and in oral lichen planus we have various types that uh, it is based on the clinical presentation so these are the clinical presentation types so we have basically six types one is reticular erosive atrophic plaque like papular and bullous oral lichen planus these are the clinical presentation different types of clinical presentation classification so let's see one by one first is a reticular type which is the most common type and commonly seen on posterior buccal mucosa and may not be seen on tongue less commonly in gingiva and lips and even vermilion border they are usually bilaterally seen characteristic pattern of interlacing white lines that is become striae the striae often displays a peripheral erythematous zone which reflects the sub epithelial inflammation so there will be the become striae is um, associated with erythematous zone which indicate uh, there is a sub epithelial inflammation and lines are wavy and parallel this is seen in reticular the name gives an idea reticular pattern we know what is how the reticular pattern of anything look like so this uh, comes try the clinical presentation will be in a reticular fashion now we have erosive erosive are usually asymptomatic atrophic areas the erosion we know erosion uh, something is removed from the surface layer surface layer is getting removed so that is erosion so atrophic areas with central ulceration of varying degree periphery of these uh, atrophic regions is usually bordered by fine white radiating striae and symptoms it could be if symptoms are there it could be pain burning sensation bleeding and also desquamative gingivitis so there will be a pseudo membrane covered covering ulceration with keratosis and erythema so there will be a pseudo membrane is covering on the erosive the third one is atrophic oral lichen planus it is characterized by a homogeneous red area smooth poorly defined erythematous area with or without peripheral striae okay the symptoms include pain and burning sensation and keratotic changes combined with mucosal erythema this could be with or without peripheral striae erosive has peripheral striae so when this uh, atrophic oral lichen planus is present in buccal mucosa or in palate there will be peripheral striae present only on buccal mucosa and palate so um, always remember the striae are very common in reticular pattern because of the striae itself it's got this particular name reticular or lichen planus now we have plaque type or lichen planus which is homogeneous well demarcated white plaque seen but not always surrounded by a uh, striae which is very common in tobacco uses which could be single or multifocal plaques will be seen and the papular type so the papular type of oral lichen planus is usually present in the initial phase of the disease so it is clinically characterized by small white dots which in most occasions intermingle with the reticular form okay and sometimes this papular elements merge with striae as part of the natural course and the last one is bullous one vesicular bullous presentation combined with reticular or erosive pattern and rare form characterized by large vesicles or bullae and lesions usually develop with an erythematous base rupture immediately leaving a painful ulcer so this bulla will rupture and there will be a painful ulcer and usually these have peripheral radiating striae and are seen on posterior part of buccal mucosa and severe form of extensive degeneration and separation of epithelium from connective tissue also seen in bullas 
or a lichen planus so these are the six types of uh, oral lichen planus what are they one is reticular erosive atrophic plaque like papular and bullous type most common one is reticular and the bullous is a very rare type so in histopathology so there are lots of features in histopathology the unique features the first one is hyper orthokeratosis or hyperparakeratosis can be seen in epithelium there will be thickening of granular layer there will be acanthosis of spinous layer there will be intercellular edema in spinous layer and there will be so tooth retapex will be seen so tooth retapex liquefaction necrosis of basal layer that is max joseph cleft space which is known as max joseph cleft space and civet bodies that is hyaline bodies or cytoid bodies are seen juxta epithelial band of inflammatory cells juxta epithelial band and any eosinophilic band may be seen just beneath the basement membrane and which represent fibrin covering of lamina propria so there are lots of histopathological features mainly civet bodies or hyaline bodies so tooth retapex max joseph cleft space all are associated with oral lichen planus so let's move on to the management and uh, treatment uh, part of oral lichen planus so basically uh, oral lichen planus the treatment goal or the management goal is to reduce the symptoms and uh, speed healing from promote the healing if symptoms are mild it may not need any treatment is a self limiting disease so it will be over by around 8 to 12 months so mild cases we can use fluorinated topical steroids or it should uh, include antihistamines uh medicines that calm down the immune system such as cyclosporin lidocaine mouthwashes to numb the area and uh, make the eating more comfortable topical corticosteroids can be uh, applied like clobetazole or oral corticosteroids to reduce swelling and lower immune responses and vitamin a cream also can be applied and the uh, we can use dressings over the skin uh, to protect from scratching and ultraviolet therapy also is an option so pharmacological methods uh, what uh, we are seen and complication is what we are seeing is it could be uh, become malignant uh, that is all chances of oral cancer is there so let's summarize this by seven p's the letter p so it is a papillosquamous lesion it is pruritic in nature it is plain topped it is polyangular it is purple colored it is papule and plaque formation and there will be pigmentation okay so oral lichen planus is an important uh, question it will be asked in uh, oral pathology and even oral medicine so you need to write maximum sub content its introduction its histopathology clinical features oral manifestations the types the six types and its management its pharmacology etiology epidemiology and predisposing factors and all subheadings you can include and don't forget few things which could be asked as short cam stray so tooth retapex max joseph cleft space and various types of lichen planus that is six types so i'll come up with a new topic and industry and more thank you